Today we're going to be looking at how to use Vieta's formulas with quadratics. And we're looking at quadratics because it's more of a simple polynomial. It has a x squared term, an x term, and a constant term. And we would like to generalize this with more polynomials, but I think it's good to start with a simple polynomial so that we can get to see the effects on quadratics and then we can try to generalize it to, to higher degree polynomials. Vieta's formulas are related to the roots, the roots of a certain polynomial. And let's take this ax squared plus bx plus c. Let's say we can write this as a times x minus r times x minus s. So let's say the roots of the polynomial Let's say the roots of the polynomial are r and s. So these are the roots of the polynomial. And you'll see that we can actually express any polynomial as a product of these binomials that each have the root, the roots of the original polynomial in them. This leading coefficient, the coefficient to the largest term, on the outside so that we have that there. But the general idea is that we can express a polynomial as a product of these binomials that involve the roots of the polynomial. So what are we going to do with this? Well, it's actually very interesting to see what happens when we expand this. Let's take, let's put the a on the outside like the same way, but this time we are going to look at the inside. And when we expand this x minus r times x minus s, we know we're going to get an x squared term at the front because the x times x. We're also going to get a minus xs and the same with the minus rx and I'll have plus R, S. So what we can actually do is now expand all of this So and combine these terms. First, we'd like to combine these x terms over here. So let's try doing that. So let's make this x squared minus S plus R x. So what I've just done is I've combined these two terms by taking the negative x out and then we're left with s plus r. And then we can simply add the rs again. Now what we'll do is of course this a is still the leading coefficient on the outside. And now we'll also expand this a back to the original equation and what we'll see is we actually have our original polynomial, except instead of the normal b and c that we have here, we have this b and c in terms of a, the leading coefficient, and its roots. So we'll see that. So let's, let's, let's distribute the a to each of the terms. So we have ax squared minus a times s plus r x plus a r s. Now we can write these formulas, this b over here and, and the c over here can each be represented in terms of the a and the roots of the equation. So let's, let's check that out. So b is equal to, and we can see from here that b is actually just negative a times s plus r. So let's go ahead and write that. So b is equal to negative a times s plus r. And let's go ahead and try it with, let's go ahead and try it with c. And we have that c is equal to a r s. 
A R S. So now we've actually represented this same quadratic over here in terms, again, of the leading coefficient and the roots. And I'm emphasizing this so many times because it's really important. The study of roots in a polynomial are really important, as we'll see in later videos in this series. And what we can actually do with this is find the sum of the roots and the product of the roots of a polynomial without actually finding the roots. For example, let's say I was given an arbitrary polynomial and let's say, let's just start simpler with a leading coefficient of one. So I'll do this over here. So let's say we have x squared plus 7x plus 1. So x squared plus 7x plus 1. Now you might be tempted. Let's say we wanted to find the, let's say you want to find the sum of roots. The sum of the roots. Let's say we wanted to find the sum of the roots. Now you might be tempted, okay, well let's just use our quadratic formula and let's find the roots. Or, or if it was a different one, let's, let's try factoring. Well, what you'll find here is that the sum of the roots, we can just write as this instead, because we see that r and s were the roots of our original quadratic. So r plus s is what we're trying to find, the sum of the roots. If the roots of this are r and s, then we can just solve for r plus s in terms of b and negative a. So let's, let's check that. So let's see, we see that r, r plus s times negative a is equal to b. So if we divide by negative a on both sides, and we know that we know that a is not zero or anything because we have a leading coefficient of one, we'll find that s plus r is equal to b over negative a. So I'll just put the negative on the outside. So we'll have that the sum of the roots of a quadratic is actually negative b over a for for any given quadratic with a with a leading coefficient and and two roots. So how can we use this to figure out the actual answer to our question? Well, let's see. We know that the a in this case is just one. There's a there's an invisible one over here, and that's a. We know that the b b is seven because we see our normal standard form ax squared plus bx plus c. So the sum of the roots, for the sum of the roots r plus s, we don't even know the roots, but we can still answer the question. Sum of the roots r plus s is just negative b over a, which is actually just equal to negative 7 over 1, which is, of course, equal to negative 7. And this is really impressive because usually finding the roots would take, I mean, it may not take that long depending on how familiar you are with the quadratic formula, but I think that it's much easier to use these formulas instead of the quadratic formula in order to find questions such as the sum of the roots. Now, of course, if you had to actually find the roots, this may not be as helpful as the quadratic formula, but we'll see. These formulas can become very useful when we have higher degree polynomials like x to the fourth, x to the fifth, that we don't exactly have formulas of. And so we'll see how useful those formulas can be for there. But now let's try to answer a different question for this, for actually let's do a different polynomial with, with a different leading coefficient. So let's try, let's try three x squared plus five x plus 10, for example. And let's answer a different question. Let's actually answer the product of the roots. What is the product of the roots? And we'll note that the product of the roots, assuming that our roots are r and s of this polynomial, the product of the roots we already have in our expression right here. This is just the product of the roots, r, s. So if we want to solve for the product of the roots, all we have to do is divide by a on both sides, and we get that r s is equal to c over a. 
rs is equal to c over a. And this is very useful because now if we want to find the product, if we want to find the product of roots, product of the roots, then we'll then all we have to do is find the leading coefficient, which we're given in the problem, and the constant term, which is c. So let's do that. So we want to find rs which is equal to c over a, and we know that c, the constant term c is 10 over here, and we know that the leading coefficient a is 3 over here. So we already know that the product of the roots is 10 over 3, which is very interesting. And let's also quickly find the sum of the roots of this polynomial. Let's also find the sum of the roots so we'll find the sum of the roots, r plus s is equal to negative b over a, as we have found. And this is equal to, in this case, b is the, is the x coefficient. So we have 5 over, and we also have to make sure to keep our negative. And our leading coefficient, a, is 3. So we have negative 5 thirds. We don't actually need to find the roots, again, to, to do these things. We just need to know that these two formulas. And this is actually a subset of Vieta's formulas. You'll find that Vieta's formulas are generalized to many different polynomials, but this, this is the first step that helps us understand how these formulas can be useful, especially if we're trying to find the product of the roots and the sum of the roots. So in a future video, we'll look at the different ways we can use these formulas in maybe problem solving techniques and we'll also look at how to use these for higher degree polynomials. Now I'd like to, if you want a challenge, try to prove this same thing using the quadratic formula instead of the instead of the factoring method that I used over here. Try to use the quadratic formula knowing that the quadratic formula gives you the roots of the polynomial and try summing those summing those two roots or multiplying those two roots that you got from the quadratic formula and see if you can get the same generic form that we got in this video today. So the main two takeaways that you should probably get from this video are the fact that the sum of the roots, which is which you can write as r plus s, assuming that r and s are the roots is equal to negative b over a for quadratics. Now these are all for quadratics and you'll see that there's slight differences with other, other larger polynomials. And the product of the roots rs is c over a. So I hope you learned something from this video and we'll explore the many interesting parts of these Vieta's formulas in future videos.